Right, I'll just give it a few seconds. Um, I've just pre-recorded this, but I didn't have my mic volume turned up, so it should be sorted now, but I don't want to have to re-record it and upload it and stuff. I've got some work to get on to today. Um, so what I wanted to do is just show off the um, difference in quality um, of Sharkade designs and basically what we go through when we design um, we what I go through when I design these custom arcades um, and the difference in quality that you'll find between just getting a random image off the internet um, to what a Sharkade design would look like um, so we're going to start off with a zombie yeti image just a standard one something i found online um, and the difference in quality now if we go over the image there you can see all these artifacts um, and the pixelation and the rough edging and stuff on the design there so that's zombie yeti's artwork and um, zombie yeti does do some quality quality pinball designs um when it comes to me leaving credit to artists and design work and stuff, um, I could use hundreds of images. I could go through thousands of different designs and layers and stuff like that. So me leaving credit to just one artist um, or leaving credit to multiple artists, I could it'll be a forever job. Um, I try and recognise some of the main well-known ones that I do use, like Zombie Yeti, I do mention it in a few videos, he does some beautiful looking artwork, but obviously he doesn't leave his solid proofs online. This is where I come in, and I make it look like it's come direct from his, um, his basically primary drawings. So, if you look at this image, um, it's a decent quality image so if we go to the image size um we go to the image size there and then we'll resolution pixels are 72 on there i usually work with 300 or enhance it to 300 um and then the width and height is a fair decent size resolution and it's a fair de decent size image but to me that isn't good enough for a shark here cabinet the pixelation the artifacts in the image the splitting and stuff like that So what I would do is I would go in, spend hours and hours rendering each image. Um, some images can take a few minutes to render it the highest possible quality um, to get rid of all this pixelation. So let's go to the edited image of that, where it's all cut out nicely. Um, the colors and vibrance of each and every character, the effects that's actually in between all the different colors and the layers. You can see now, even zooming right in, those lines are spot on. I don't know if the video is going to record that, but the lines and everything are quality. The different effects, if you look in between each line, you usually where you would see the artifacts they've been taken down to almost absolute smoothness you know, this is something you would expect from a professional artist their original drone to look like you would expect their original drone to look at least at this quality and then then would use that to print on whatever banners and stuff like that them um, use um i mean i can take generally a really low quality image and um, super enhance it um so but in some images just look terrible once it's been enhanced they look really blurry and stuff like that blurry i can sometimes work with because it blends quite nicely on some images um and then i can give it nice sharp lines and stuff like that so i have a lot of years of um, editing background um from the age of 15 I was in college, actual big college at 15. Um, not many people know, no school would accept me. Um, me, my brothers wouldn't accept us in school. Um, so I was in college, I was doing college work, I was doing IT level three work, I was doing all sorts of stuff, desktop publishing, media studies, graphics design, so on and so on and so on. 
Um, so I have a lot of years background and even at a young age I was always into tinkering and stuff like that with PCs and um, computer parts, so all sorts, consoles, everything modifying and stuff. So I have many, many years background in this. Um, so if we say go to that image there and I could find a quality image. I could find something that is looks that's gonna look really cool on an arcade. Um, but it's a shape of the arcade. Bar tops can be quite difficult um, because I could get that image there, but I'd only get say this area, let's say that area there in a bar top design. Um, so I would end up cutting off most of these characters and most of the the, the important stuff that you want to see on a design. Um, I can resize them, but then I've also got to look at the backgrounds. Um, so I've got to add extra stuff in there. Um, some images are just literally copy and paste after they've been enhanced, copy and paste and stuff like that. An image might take us an hour, might take us a day might take us up to five days doing design work different layers different effects i may even come across cool images that i just can't use that aren't going to blend right with other art styles so that's why i always say look i like to work on a design um that's themed and the art styles have got to match because if i put something like this art style um which is like a 3d comic style effect it, it's a completely different art style to that i wouldn't use that image there in a design with that art style it, it, i just won't do it um because it doesn't look right um lower quality images though the background image of this isn't low quality it isn't enhanced just like that but it's had all the color removed it's been black and white and it can be faded in. So even low quality images can be faded into the background and made black and white faded in. And then you get rid of a lot of the pixelation and artifacts that you would see in an image. And it'll blend in nicely. So there's different layers, different effects that I will use. Um, let's go ahead and remove the brickwork. So if I just remove the brickwork there, that's a whole new style in design. So you have got two designs there that I could use. I could use just that without the brickwork and it looks really smart, looks really nice. Um, you've got the different layer effects. Now you've probably seen this smoke effect before. This is what well, was on a spawn cabinet. To me, it looks like smoke and slime. So it, it matches the turtles. It's got a nice effect. It's just something to distract the eye. Um, and what I like to do sometimes is I like to have a um, the foreground images at the highest possible quality. And if I've got to use lower quality images, have those in the background as like a blur effect and stuff like that. So when you look at a shark edge unit, that's why your eyes attracted to it more is because those foreground images, those high quality, the important images are standing out more. It's looking really vibrant. It, it catches your eye and so on. So like I say, there's a ton of work and stuff that goes into the designs themselves. Now, like I say, I try and leave credit where credit is due for some artists, but some design work, I could be going through hundreds of images. If you look at me Street Fighter folder, I've got tons of comic books and stuff like that. Um, if you're not really very good at doing design work um, and you're not good at artwork, I do re recommend going to some of the comic book sites because some of the comic books themselves, the image quality is ridiculous. It's like it's the um, primary prints of the actual comic books themselves. So you're getting the best quality looking images like that one there, that one. That one's good enough to add to a unit, to cut out and um, to use part of the image. Um, and that's that's at pretty good quality, but I'd still enhance that. So those colours and everything will pop. You'd get no artefacts on the blend, which this hasn't, to be honest, hasn't got many artefacts in it. 
um, to the point it, it doesn't look too pixelated when you zoom in and stuff. It's got that effect in the background, but that is a perfect image to use. Um, but I would still go ahead and enhance that anyways. Because um, when I do my enhancements, you see the difference in color tone and everything that you get with a shark edge unit. Um, so it's not simply going ahead, copy and pasting an image and saying, right, there we go. I, I've designed that. That's 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 um, a design by shark You know what I mean? Um, if we go back to the raw quality image, you just see the pixelation is ridiculously bad on there um, but it's still a good quality image now that from a distance standing back looking at an arcade artwork if that was just placed on an arcade and um, that would be good enough quality and a lot of these companies do do that a lot of these companies do just simply cut and paste the images on and put different layers and different backgrounds and different blends and stuff like that um, one pet hate I do hate is mix match designs and not say if you've got like uh, Mario, Sonic and stuff like that. I don't like doing different art styles because it doesn't blend nicely. It looks like the stickers placed all over your unit and it's, it's, it's not a quality design. I love to go with something themed and I'm not saying every design I've ever done is a masterpiece. And there's some designs I, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of. Um, you know, but the, it's initially down to what the customer wants. I try and do my best what the customer wants. And most of the time, most of the time, customers are happy, even with the first example I send. Um, some customers are like, eh, I, I like the way it's looking, but could you do it in this style? Um, and I'm always honest. Um, if I think it's not going to look very good. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, look, I don't think it's going to look right. It's uh, the blends. I'll give a, I'll always give a reason. And I'm not always right. Um, color tones, mixing it, like say a, a light colorful background with a dark background and stuff like that. I might be, yeah, I don't think it's going to look too good because, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time just doing stuff like this, just doing the first initial edit. And then I'm having to work the extra of someone going, I don't like the way that looks sharky. Could you do this? And I'll give me honest opinion. But then it's, like I say, it's initially down to the customer. So when I say it takes up to five days, it can, man. It can take so long. Um, sometimes I have mental blocks as well. Um, I'll sit there and be like, oh, how am I going to work this out? I've, I've got all these hundreds of images. I mean, there used to be a few hundred in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles folder. So if I just go down to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles folder, this used to be packed with images. And even some nice images, but stuff that I would never use on a cabinet because those images aren't good enough. Know what I mean? They're not going to fit. They're not going to blend nicely. Um, and... It's not just down to that either. Um, if we go, have I got it open in Photoshop? Um, no, I don't have it open there. So let's go. Um, this image here. So this image here, I've actually edited this image before. Um, and see, you've got these artifacts here. You've got plastic on the artwork there. Um, you've got the water, that uh, bit of his foot's cut off. I've got to blend everything in as well as having it look high quality and make sure his sword looks like it's part of the image. So redraw that part of the image. I've got to redraw the hand and everything. And it's all done by hand, at keyboard and mouse. So I do have limitations of what I can do. I mean, I'm not saying I'm the best in the world at doing design work. I'm not. Um, there's some limitations. I've got a decent art background, but I don't have um, tablets where I can draw and redraw and redesign. Um, I do it all by hand with keyboard and mouse. So we've we've got to take in consideration. It might be a cool image, but the, it might just be beyond certain artifacts on it might just be beyond editing and you don't want something that just looks like it's pasted blurred and put on the design itself um and 
I don't want to have to keep four, five hundred images on there that I'd never use. Um, even some of these I'd have to go back through and clean out. It's like this image here I've used as dust covers. I've actually enhanced this image. So if we look at that image there, that's perfect for a dust cover. And they look really nice printed. They look really, really nice printed. But I've had to go in, go into my HQ folder. So I always um, save like anything that I've done some rendering on and stuff. Um, I always have it upscaled and if you see there the difference in quality between that and that there's not a huge difference but it is noticeable you can see the greens a bit less vibrant so it's more vibrant there and on that one the pixelation between each line now even if you get a high quality image a decent quality image what you'll find if I can find one, um, let's go back. Um, the more detail in the image, the more artifacts you end up with. So let's go to this one. I think this is a render I've done already. Or was this the original image? That's that's a render. Um, so where's the original image? Is that the one there? So there's the original image there, which is still pretty good quality. But when you start getting to each line look of the different blends from one color to another, you always on any image that you find, you always find these artifacts when it's blending from one color to the next. You always get these artifacts. Now I've got to go in and edit all those artifacts out. All those artifacts have got to be edited out of the image. Um, to make it look as clean as it does on there. So that's all I wanted to do really for the video is just really show off what it means to buy a Sharkade custom arcade unit. It means that you're not one getting one of the highest quality arcade builds on the market. Now there's some good companies out there and some I don't like but there is some companies out there that do some beautiful looking machines um, and do some quality builds. But when you get a Sharkade unit, you are getting all that extra design work, all that extra hard work at a reasonable price. You're getting high end custom arcade units. You're getting machines, tiny machines. No one builds a small unit like I do. A plug and play unit you can just grab from one room, take it over to the next room, set it up in the kids room, plug it into the TV and it's just there, it works and it's it's portable. Um, our Ultimate Deluxe Control Panels are so small, they're not very heavy. They've got a bit of weight to them. Um, if I swap the wood out to the cheaper wood, the weight would reduce as well, even more. But I only use high quality melamine MDF, the high grade stuff. I don't use low grade stuff. If you get a simple melamine MDF board and compare it to my moisture resistant board, the, the density of that board is a lot higher. It would take a lot more to break that board than it would be a standard board. Um, you do get cheap moisture resistant stuff that's the stuff i try and avoid where well, i do avoid i don't allow any me or the arcade shell cuts to be a lower quality grade i just don't like it it can split it can break and so on so i try to stick to the best possible high quality boards i can get now wood prices are ridiculous and for the high grade stuff it's even more ridiculous at the moment so i try and keep my prices the same I don't try and up them. I mean, even through COVID, when GPU prices were skyrocketing, um, I think they went up to double. 300 quid um, RTX 2060 cards went up to 600 quid. I didn't change my prices. I kept them the same. Um, and over time, because of all the other material prices that have gone up, I've had to knock my prices up. Know what I mean? I was taking for a year, a year and a half, I was taking a 300 quid hit in my profits. Now that's $450, that's £300. That's a lot of profit to be um, taken out of the units. Um, especially with the control panels, the power supplies are custom PSUs. 
they're customized for those machines and um, they're specifically di designed for those machines have so been tested and all the performance and everything are adequate for the gpu the motherboards the motherboards themselves aren't cheap your cheap standard actually better quality motherboard than what's in the bar tops and the stand-ups we use a small mini itx um motherboard so i think that there might be gigabyte i can't think off the top of my head but the mini ac itx motherboards um with built-in wi-fi and all that stuff they're a decent motherboard the performance of them is quite quite outstanding and with it being all built into the control panel and they're all portable it's just perfect but i'm going a bit too far away from the actual um design work like i'm discussing the day but like i say when it comes to the custom artwork the designs and stuff like that i do take a lot of um going in making sure all the images are as sharp as possible and even like i say it comes down to the layering as well and um, doing your different layers now to look at this you would say right shocky way that's just that image there and then all you've done is merged another cut out image in the background there faded it in put a bit of smoke effect there on the side put the logo up on there and then done some color blending and um, from one side to the other yeah i've done all that um but when it come to actually design it i've had to come to that conclusion um i've would have had wait with this i did i had different layers different colors different tones different effects different images in the background um i've gone through tens to 20 different styles of images to just come to this one design to be right let's simplify it down to looking like that and look at your images and may have hundreds of different i mean i have done designs with hundreds of different different images in it different layers i mean the deadpool one was just i think two images but they literally were enhanced chopped changed enhanced again chopped and changed so even the background foreground images were enhanced brought forward they were overlaid and that was another zombie yeti image but the amount of work that just went in to using two images to make one artwork was ridiculous a different blends dragging in images from another image and i like to mix match them so they don't look exactly like zombie yeti's design um let's go ahead and look at uh, the deadpool cabinet a second um it was a bar top on it so it was um ultra wide bar top and it was deadpool and which one was it because i've got different i've got deadpool black deadpool 2 i think it was deadpool 2 because i may come across it i may do an image for a customer and be like and i've done so many i've got designs i really like that customers haven't liked but i've kept those images there uh, and stuff so like this deadpool one now that side art there is two images two zombie yeti designs but the layout of where the images are and the blending in the background and all that um you won't find that image anywhere you'll find the two images and you'd be able to see that the the artifacts of those two images are on that image but you won't find them in that layout um getting them in that layout getting the image background images to look correct to blend in nicely and you've got all these different effects coming in and um, that's a completely different image there that's not part of the image at all and um, but these this is just two images that's been worked on and worked on and worked on um it, it was ridiculous that took us quite a while um it wasn't just simply cut and paste that image so let's head to our deadpool folder so let's go deadpool and then there's basically the two images i think it's those two is it is it that one if we go in yeah so you've got the you see the pixelation there just on that image and i think this is the be best quality image i could find 
for Deadpool and then we'll go to that one there open the Photoshop and there so you see, see Wolverine's over there you have all the characters there um, and that's another zombie yeti design but if we head into our HQ folder where it's all being rendered and um, let's because I should have multiple of these as well um, so let's open up that and then just zoom in you can see the quality in the design there let's go let's close that one off now leave that one open let's close a couple of these off a second let's close that off and that there we've just seen that we've seen the example of that and that so let's move that over so we've got them side by side there so we zoom in there and we'll look at that just zoom out once so there you can see that's pixelated like mad that's that's blurry it's got tons of artifacts on all the edges and then we just click onto that image there it's like it's a remastered image it it's it looks like a solid proof of that design um that's that's a quality that you would get if someone designed that themselves personally it come direct from zombie yeti's um, main folder so like i say i do go from low quality up to ridiculous uh, super high quality so let's see the size of that image so go to image size so we're still only at resolution 72 on there but we're 4000 by 2580 and we do convert it over to 300 pixel as well when we are finished um, and we go to image size there and then look we're gone basically four nearly four times the size of that original image now you do four times let's let's for example go to uh, image image size and let's make that four times the size of that original image and you're going to lose quality again so image size and let's make it four times the size oh we're there we'll i want to constrain proportions there so let's make that four times the size right we're going to lose quality again right so we've now made that four times the size and you can see how blurry that is let's go back let's zoom out a second go back let's move that over a little and you can see the complete difference in quality so that's now at the same resolution as that but it's nowhere near to the quality and the sharpness and the design of that so like i say there is a lot that goes in now making it bigger does blur it out nicely you see it blurs it a bit more it doesn't look as um pixelated on the edging which does help and um, that and helps to at least enhance it and sharpen it up to look something on the lines of that now if you look at the artifacts that's actually in the image in the blending see how it blends but you then you've got that really sharp line coming around there you've got the sharp line so basically the edging of all the image is like uh i've gone ahead but i haven't there's some um techniques i use but it looks like i've gone in cut out each and every portion of the image all the backgrounds all the um all the different layers of each image it looks like i've manually gone in and cut out the edging of each and every every portion of that image and laid it over on top of each other like you would do if you were creating digital art like that you would have different layers and that would be the best method to get those sharp edges then would be all different um layers so that, that line there would be a different layer then you would have that line there would be a layer and so on and it's basically like when you trace an image if you go into like coral draw and you trace an image and you trace a layer 
you'd trace all those different layers and images and lay it over and that's how you get that really nice crisp quality look but I've got some techniques that work even better and it doesn't take as long as that um so yeah like i say there's a lot that goes in when people say oh, you just grab the zombie yeti image and anyone can do that nah nah no not everyone's doing this quality they're not getting that that style um that's that's just obscene quality compared to the original image and then then you've got to also look at right he's where's he put these images has he just overlaid them no i've took deadpool out i've added the van in there i've added the dinosaurs in there because i wanted to see the dinosaur the shark and squid on on the image i wanted to see the van on there i wanted to see deadpool but i also wanted different on the other side so i wanted to see that different to that side so we've got that image there so if we look at um the two images so we've got him there but we've actually got him punching on that image but that punch image is down there and we've got cable there instead and then we've got deadpool grabbing the taco and um we haven't got him on there but we've got the dinosaurs you know what i mean so mix matching and stuff like that to come out with the best possible design um there is a lot of work uh, like i say the deadpool one did take extra time than what the turtles one did um but there's still each and every design there's a hell of a um work goes into each and every design now i don't take credit for any of the artwork i find um obviously my skills are limited i'm not going to go in and hand draw stuff and um, some parts if i've got to redraw it and stuff like that i'll draw it on redraw it in but i do have limitations if you wanted like a teenage mutant ninja turtle design and you wanted it to look like this but not with these images i'm not going to be able to do that it's uh, that is too way too much work um and i'd never get any job done or design done um actually having to physically redraw stuff um and hand draw stuff uh, i'm not I, I i'm selling custom built bespoke arcades with custom graphics i'm not hand drawing these images for you um i'll only go with something i can find online if i can find the high enough quality images i'll use them if i can can't render that image to that quality i would have to do a different style design so like i say i was gonna i did re pre-record this but the audio wasn't there i'm hoping the audio is on this video because i am live streaming but i thought i'd go through that um if you wish to purchase a shark aid custom arcade unit there is an um 18 to 20 week build period at the moment i know there's a few that are a bit over that time period because we had a large stint of orders around the same time so we're just cracking on and banging through those orders um if you wish to purchase a unit you can hit us up at dean at sharkade.co.uk we do have some special offers on on the units i do prefer if you can pay via credit card or um, bank transfer it does help me out and the more profit i make the more stuff i can produce so that money a lot of me profit i do put back into the business i do put into new products um and it does help me out a great great deal man um well, if you can't and paypal's the only option go with paypal we do offer paypal option we offer stripe as well as this new stripe option on there i think it does take a few days to clear and so many days to then be allowed to be transferred from stripe because it's a new account um so i can't purchase any parts up until then um if you do cancel your order after i've ordered the parts themselves there is a cancellation fee we do do a cancellation fee um so you've got to be serious on wanting to buy a shark aid custom arcade unit because it is a long period of time i don't start any design work as well up until i start your build so 
a lot of customers ask where the design is this that, and the other i don't do that until i start your build that's because you may change your mind and most people do and um, they may be adamant on purchase i want a space invaders design shark you want a space invaders and customers most of the time change their mind and go with something else or they might want a Tekken design, but then they want, oh no, I want a Tekken Law, or no, I want, know what I mean? So, like I say, it's, I don't do any design work up until I do start your build. That way it's fresh in your mind, it's fresh in my mind, and I can produce something that you want. Um, and it ends up being the machine you want. And it gives you plenty of time to think what you want. You may even just want a design I've already got. You may want a custom design. You may want something completely different. The, the final result of the design is decided by you. Nothing's really printed till you're 100% agreed on the design. That has been once or twice. I haven't come to a full agreement with some customers because of them have got a vision and I just can't create that vision because I can't find the artwork at that quality. Um, uh, there has been one or two disagreements in the past, but majority of the time, I do my best and you can see it in my artwork um you can see it in my google reviews as well i've got a five star rating on google um i had some issues a few weeks back with google and um, someone um had me google website removed and um, there was no review either there was no um warning it was just completely removed um luckily i got all that reinstated and got it sorted pretty quick um it was a little scary because obviously it, it's me business um it's my main income so there's always people trying to screw you over i just want to build cool arcades um i want to design the best of the best custom quality arcades um and I try and use the best images I find online as well. So I try, like the Zombie Yeti, you can't go wrong with any of his images. Anything you find of his online, even the low quality stuff is pretty decent quality. And when you put that on an arcade, it does look beautiful. I've done a, um, what was it? Iron Maiden one, Iron Maiden design, another beautiful design, not a beautiful artwork to deal with. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a Deadpool, and so on so and anything i use on his artwork comes out gold it does it, it just looks so nice um but there's other designs i've done that um are completely unrelevant or mixed or images from all different styles and um different images um there was the oh what was it devil may cry unit that was multiple images even some different style artworks were put on there but it was so noticeable um, and it just looked so nice. Such a good looking unit. Um, so I can do some mix matching, but I prefer not to um, because it is a complete headache um, to try and mix match designs and blend mix matched images. It's always best as well, like I say, go with a theme. So like I say, if you wish to purchase a Sharkhead unit, you can get us at dnatsharkhead.co.uk. You can go to the website, sharkhead.co.uk. And we do have special offers, so just send us an email, say, hey, Sharkhead, I'm interested in one of your machines. Um, and let us know what machine you want. And then I'll tell you what special offer is on that machine, what I can save you. And if you want to do a transfer payment or anything like that i can write your invoices up or you can just purchase directly from the website you can do bank transfer option or anything like that it'll give you the details that you've got to pay the, it to as soon as the payment's clear you get marked on the list you get marked down on the website as paid and then you're on the list first come first served is the way i see it now if it is a big unit and we've got smaller units to do i'll generally do the smaller units alongside the big units as well um, if it's all smaller units, it, it'd be heaven for me because I'd be able to build so many builds. Um, I'd be able to build so many units if it was just all smaller units. But, you know, customers want different things. They want big units. The big units do slows down on me builds, but it's the way it is. I, I'm selling those products. Um, so 
it's first come first served that's priority to me so once i'm ready to start your unit i'll be in touch and i'll say hey, what design do you want okay um, sometimes things get held up if I'm trying to get things out for shipped shipped out at the time if um, delivery guys don't turn up one day when I'm waiting in all day till five o'clock that's happened so many times and it's happened recently as well where I've waited in till five o'clock and I want to just get home do some video editing get a YouTube video put up and um, do some design work and I'm sat at work waiting for guys to come in to collect the machine and it don't turn up then i've got to lose the next day because i'm waiting in then when i could be taking that day off at home doing design work ready for the next builds so and i'd like when i do design work like i say i do like to sit down and focus just on that design and then once i've done that design i'll move on to the next one and then i'll get the next customer's design done and then if that customer i'm waiting for a reply from that customer and the other customers replied and says hey i like that i'll 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 juggle the designs around and so on so but i do when i'm in design mode i like to do designs i like to focus fully on what images what images i'm going to hand select and um, what images i can't use and like i say i've sat there so many times i've rendered an image to high quality i've messed on with all the pixelation and stuff like that and i thought yeah this image is going to work great and then i put it on the machine and i went i don't like it or oh, it doesn't look right and it, i've got nothing to blend with it i'm stuck with this cool image with nothing to blend in the background so i thought like i say i'll do a video of it it's something different Um, it gives you an insight of what sharkade um, does for his customers and the lengths and means i go through to get you look with the best looking machines on the market so like share subscribe to the videos hit that notification bell and i will catch us in the next one bye